Canada. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Canada is a country occupying most of northern North America, extending from the Atlantic Ocean in the east to the Pacific Ocean in the west and northward into the Arctic Ocean. It is the world's second largest country by total area and shares land borders with the United States to the south and northwest. The lands have been inhabited for millennia by Aboriginal peoples. Beginning in the late 15th century, British and French expeditions explored and later settled the Atlantic coast. France ceded nearly all of its colonies in North America in 1763 after the Seven Years' War. In 1867, with the union of three British North American colonies through Confederation, Canada was formed as a federal, semi-autonomous polity. This began an accretion of additional provinces and territories, and a process of increasing autonomy from the United Kingdom, highlighted by the Statute of Westminster in 1931, and culminating in the Canada Act in 1982, which severed the vestiges of legal dependence on the British Parliament. A federation now comprising ten provinces and three territories, Canada is a parliamentary democracy and a constitutional monarchy, with Queen Elizabeth II as its head of state. It is a bilingual and multicultural country, with both English and French as official languages at the federal level. Technologically advanced and industrialized, Canada maintains a diversified economy that is heavily reliant upon its abundant natural resources and upon trade, particularly with the United States, with which Canada has had a long and complex relationship. Contents This article contains 16 sections. Section 1. Etymology Section 2. History Section 3. Government and Politics Section 4. Law. Section 5. Foreign Relations and Military. Section 6. Provinces and Territories. Section 7. Geography and Climate. Section 8. Economy. Section 9. Demographics. Section 10. Culture. Section 11. Language. Section 12. International Rankings. Section 13. See also. Section 14. Notes. Section 15. References. Section 16. External links. Section 1. Etymology. Image. Jacques Cartier. The name Canada comes from a St. Lawrence Iroquoian word, meaning village or settlement. In 1535, inhabitants of the present-day Quebec City region used the word to direct explorer Jacques Cartier toward the village of Stadacona. Cartier used the word Canada to refer to not only that village, but the entire area subject to Don Acona, chief at Stadacona. By 1545, European books and maps began referring to this region as Canada. The French colony of Canada referred to the part of New France along the St. Lawrence River and the northern shores of the Great Lakes. Later, it was split into two British colonies, called Upper Canada and Lower Canada, until their union as the British Province of Canada in 1841. Upon Confederation in 1867, the name Canada was adopted for the entire country, and it was frequently referred to as the Dominion of Canada until the 1950s. As Canada asserted its political autonomy from Britain, the federal government increasingly used Canada on legal state documents and treaties. The Canada Act, 1982, refers only to Canada, and, as such, it is currently the only legal and bilingual name. This was reflected in 1982 with the renaming of the national holiday from Dominion Day to Canada Day. Section 2 History Image The fur trade was Canada's most important industry until the 1800s. Aboriginal and Inuit tradition holds that the first peoples inhabited parts of Canada prehistorically. Archaeological studies support a human presence in northern Yukon 
from 26,500 years ago, and in southern Ontario from 9,500 years ago. Europeans first arrived when the Vikings settled briefly at Lance aux Meadows, circa AD 1000. The next Europeans to explore Canada's Atlantic coast included John Cabot in 1497 for England and Jacques Cartier in 1534 for France. Seasonal Basque whalers and fishermen would subsequently exploit the region between the Grand Banks and Tadoussac for over a century. French explorer Samuel de Champlain arrived in 1603 and established the first permanent European settlements at Port Royal in 1605 and Quebec City in 1608. These would become, respectively, the capitals of Acadia and Canada. Among French colonists of New France, Canadiens extensively settled the St. Lawrence River Valley, Acadians settled the present-day Maritimes, while French fur traders and Catholic missionaries explored the Great Lakes, Hudson Bay, and the Mississippi watershed to Louisiana. The French and Iroquois wars broke out over control of the fur trade. Image The Death of General Wolfe on the Plains of Abraham at Quebec in 1759, part of the Seven Years' War. The English established fishing outposts in Newfoundland around 1610 and colonized the thirteen colonies to the south. A series of four intercolonial wars erupted between 1689 and 1763. Mainland Nova Scotia came under British rule with the Treaty of Utrecht, 1713. The Treaty of Paris, 1763, ceded Canada and most of New France to Britain following the Seven Years' War. The Royal Proclamation, 1763, carved the province of Quebec out of New France and annexed Cape Breton Island to Nova Scotia. It also restricted the language and religious rights of French Canadians. In 1769, St. John's Island, now Prince Edward Island, became a separate colony. To avert conflict in Quebec, the Quebec Act of 1774 expanded Quebec's territory to the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley and re-established the French language, Catholic faith, and French civil law in Quebec. It angered many residents of the Thirteen Colonies, helping to fuel the American Revolution. The Treaty of Paris, 1783, recognized American independence and ceded territories south of the Great Lakes to the United States. Approximately 50,000 United Empire Loyalists fled the United States to Canada. New Brunswick was split from Nova Scotia as part of a reorganization of Loyalist settlements in the Maritimes. To accommodate English-speaking Loyalists in Quebec, the Constitutional Act of 1791 divided the province into French-speaking Lower Canada and English-speaking Upper Canada, granting each their own elected legislative assembly. Canada was a major front in the War of 1812 between the United States and British Empire. Its defense contributed to a sense of unity among British North Americans. Large-scale immigration to Canada began in 1815 from Britain and Ireland. The timber industry would also surpass the fur trade in importance in the early 1800s. Image Robert Harris's painting of the Fathers of Confederation the scene is an amalgamation of the Charlottetown and Quebec City conference sites and attendees. The desire for responsible government resulted in the aborted rebellions of 1837. The Durham Report, 1839, would subsequently recommend responsible government and the assimilation of French Canadians into British culture. The Act of Union, 1840, merged the Canadas into a united province of Canada. French and English Canadians worked together in the Assembly to reinstate French rights. Responsible government was established for all British North American provinces by 1849. The signing of the Oregon Treaty by Britain and the United States in 1846 ended the Oregon Boundary Dispute, extending the border westward along the 49th parallel, and paving the way for British colonies on Vancouver Island 1849, and in British Columbia, 1858. 
Canada launched a series of Western exploratory expeditions to claim Rupert's Land and the Arctic region. The Canadian population grew rapidly because of high birth rates. British immigration was offset by emigration to the United States, especially by French Canadians moving to New England. Image An animated map exhibiting the growth and refactoring of Canada's provinces and territories since Confederation. Following several constitutional conferences, the British North America Act brought about Confederation, creating one dominion under the name of Canada, on July 1, 1867, with four provinces, Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. Canada assumed control of Rupert's Land and the Northwestern Territory to form the Northwest Territories, where Métis grievances ignited the Red River Rebellion and the creation of the province of Manitoba in July 1870. British Columbia and Vancouver Island, which had united in 1866, and the colony of Prince Edward Island, joined Confederation in 1871 and 1873, respectively. Prime Minister John A. Macdonald's Conservative Party established a national policy of tariffs to protect nascent Canadian manufacturing industries. To open the West, the government sponsored construction of three transcontinental railways, most notably the Canadian Pacific Railway, opened the prairies to settlement with the Dominion Lands Act, and established the Northwest Mounted Police to assert its authority over this territory. In 1898, after the Klondike Gold Rush in the Northwest Territories, the Canadian government decided to create the Yukon Territory as a separate territory in the region to better control the situation. Under Liberal Prime Minister Wilfrid Laurier, continental European immigrants settled the prairies, and Alberta and Saskatchewan became provinces in 1905. Image. Canadian soldiers would win the Battle of Vimy Ridge in 1917. Canada automatically entered the First World War in 1914 with Britain's declaration of war, sending volunteers to the Western Front. The conscription crisis of 1917 erupted when Conservative Prime Minister Robert Borden brought in compulsory military service over the objection of French-speaking Quebecers. In 1919, Canada joined the League of Nations independently of Britain. In 1931, the Statute of Westminster affirmed Canada's independence. The Great Depression of 1929 brought economic hardship to all of Canada. In response, the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation in Alberta and Saskatchewan presaged a welfare state as pioneered by Tommy Douglas in the 1940s and 1950s. Canada declared war on Germany independently during World War II under Liberal Prime Minister William Lyon Mackenzie King, three days after Britain. The first Canadian Army units arrived in Britain in December 1939. Canadian troops played important roles in the Battle of the Atlantic, the failed 1942 Dieppe raid in France, the Allied invasion of Italy, and the Battle of the Scheldt during the liberation of the Netherlands in 1944. The Canadian economy boomed as industry manufactured military materiel for Canada, Britain, China, and the Soviet Union. Despite another conscription crisis in Quebec, Canada finished the war with one of the largest armed forces in the world. In 1949, Newfoundland joined Confederation as Canada's 10th province. Post-war prosperity and economic expansion ignited a baby boom and attracted immigration from war-ravaged European countries. Quebec underwent profound social and economic changes during the Quiet Revolution of the 1960s. Quebecois nationalists began pressing for greater provincial autonomy. The separatist Parti Québécois first came to power in 1976. A referendum on sovereignty association in 1980 was rejected by a solid majority of the population and a second referendum in 1995 was rejected by a slimmer margin of just 50.6 percent to 49.4 percent. In 1997, the Canadian Supreme Court ruled unilateral secession by a province to be unconstitutional. Quebec's sovereignty movement has continued nonetheless. Image. 
The Queen and the Registrar General Signing the Constitution Act, 1982. Under successive liberal governments of Lester B. Pearson and Pierre Trudeau, a new Canadian identity emerged. Canada adopted its current maple leaf flag in 1965. In response to a more assertive French-speaking Quebec, the federal government became officially bilingual with the Official Languages Act of 1969. Non-discriminatory immigration acts were introduced in 1967 and 1976, and official multiculturalism in 1971. Waves of non-European immigration had changed the face of the country. Social democratic programs, such as universal health care, the Canada Pension Plan, and Canada Student Loans were initiated in the 1960s and consolidated in the 1970s. Provincial governments, particularly Quebec, fought these as incursions into their jurisdictions. Finally, Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau pushed through the patriation of the Constitution from Britain, enshrining a Charter of Rights and Freedoms based on individual rights in the Constitution Act of 1982. Economic integration with the United States has increased significantly since World War II. The Canada-United States Automotive Agreement in 1965 and the Canada-United States Free Trade Agreement of 1987 were defining moments in integrating the two economies. Canadian nationalists continued to worry about their cultural autonomy as American television shows, movies, and corporations became omnipresent. However, Canadians take special pride in their system of universal health care and their commitment to multiculturalism. Section 3. Government and Politics Image. Parliament Hill, Ottawa. Canada is a constitutional monarchy, with Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, as head of state. The Canadian monarch also serves as head of state of 15 other Commonwealth countries, putting Canada in a personal union relationship with those other states. The country is a parliamentary democracy, with a federal system of parliamentary government and strong democratic traditions. Canada's constitution consists of written text and unwritten traditions and conventions. The Constitution Act, 1867, formerly the British North America Act, established governance based on parliamentary precedent, similar in principle to that of the United Kingdom, and divided powers between the federal and provincial governments. The Constitution Act, 1982, added a Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which guarantees basic rights and freedoms for Canadians that generally cannot be overridden by legislation of any level of government in Canada. However, a notwithstanding clause allows the federal parliament and the provincial legislatures to override certain sections of the charter temporarily for a period of five years. Image. The Chamber of the House of Commons. The monarch is represented by a viceroy the Governor-General, who is empowered to exercise almost all of the constitutional duties of the Sovereign, though wielding these powers almost always on the advice of the appointed Queen's Privy Council for Canada. In practice, the only body to direct the use of the executive powers is the Cabinet, a committee of the Privy Council made up of Ministers of the Crown, all of whom are responsible to the elected House of Commons. The Cabinet is headed by the Prime Minister, who holds the conventional position of head of government. To ensure the stability of government, the Governor-General will usually appoint the person who is the current leader of the political party that can obtain the confidence of a plurality in the House of Commons. The Prime Minister chooses the Cabinet, and, by convention, the Governor-General respects the Prime Minister's choices. Mikhail Jean has served as Governor-General since September 27, 2005, and Stephen Harper, leader of the Conservative Party, has been her Prime Minister since February 6, 2006. The Federal Parliament is made up of the Queen and the two Houses, an elected House of Commons and an appointed Senate. Each member in the House of Commons is elected by simple plurality in a riding or electoral district. General elections are called by the Governor-General when the Prime Minister so advises. While there is no minimum term for a Parliament, 
a new election must be called within five years of the last general election. Members of the Senate, whose seats are apportioned on a regional basis, are chosen by the Prime Minister and formally appointed by the Governor-General, and serve until age 75. Four parties have substantial representation in the federal parliament, the Conservative Party of Canada, the Liberal Party of Canada, the New Democratic Party, and the Bloc Québécois. The current government is formed by the Conservative Party of Canada. While the Green Party of Canada and other smaller parties do not have current representation in Parliament, the list of historical parties with elected representation is substantial. Section 4. Law. Image. The Supreme Court of Canada in Ottawa, west of Parliament Hill. Canada's judiciary plays an important role in interpreting laws and has the power to strike down laws that violate the Constitution. The Supreme Court of Canada is the highest court and final arbiter, and is led by the Right Honourable Madam Chief Justice, Beverly McLaughlin, P.C. Its nine members are appointed by the Governor-General on the advice of the Prime Minister. All judges at the superior and appellate levels are appointed by the Governor-General on the advice of the Prime Minister and Minister of Justice, after consultation with non-governmental legal bodies. The Federal Cabinet appoints justices to superior courts at the provincial and territorial levels. Judicial posts at the lower provincial and territorial levels are filled by their respective governments. See Court System of Canada for more detail. Common law prevails everywhere except in Quebec, where civil law predominates. Criminal law is solely a federal responsibility and is uniform throughout Canada. Law enforcement, including criminal courts, is a provincial responsibility, but in rural areas of all provinces except Ontario and Quebec, policing is contracted to the Federal Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Section 5. Foreign Relations and Military Image. The Peacekeeping Monument in Ottawa. Canada and the United States share the world's longest undefended border, cooperate on military campaigns and exercises, and are each other's largest trading partners. Canada has nevertheless maintained an independent foreign policy, most notably maintaining full relations with Cuba and declining to participate in the Iraq War. Canada also maintains historic ties to the United Kingdom and France, and to other former British and French colonies, through Canada's membership in the Commonwealth of Nations and La Francophonie, French-speaking countries. Canada currently employs a professional volunteer military force of about 64,000 regular and 26,000 reserve personnel. The unified Canadian forces comprise the Army, Navy, and Air Force. Major Canadian forces equipment deployed includes 1,400 armored fighting vehicles, 34 combat vessels, and 861 aircraft. Image. Lester B. Pearson with the 1957 Nobel Peace Prize. Strong attachment to the British Empire and Commonwealth in English Canada led to major participation in British military efforts in the Second Boer War, the First World War, and the Second World War. Since then, Canada has been an advocate for multilateralism, making efforts to resolve global issues in collaboration with other nations. Canada joined the United Nations in 1945 and became a founding member of NATO in 1949. During the Cold War, Canada was a major contributor to UN forces in the Korean War and founded the North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, in cooperation with the United States to defend against aerial attacks from the Soviet Union. Canada has played a leading role in UN peacekeeping efforts. During the Suez Crisis of 1956, Lester B. Pearson eased tensions by proposing the inception of the United Nations Peacekeeping Force. Canada has since served in 50 peacekeeping missions, including every UN peacekeeping effort until 1989, and has since maintained forces in international missions in the former Yugoslavia and elsewhere. Canada joined the Organization of American States, or OAS, in 1990. 
Canada hosted the OAS General Assembly in Windsor in June 2000, and the third Summit of the Americas in Quebec City in April 2001. Canada seeks to expand its ties to Pacific Rim economies through membership in the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum. Image. Canadian Soldiers in Afghanistan. Since 2001, Canada has had troops deployed in Afghanistan as part of the U.S. Stabilization Force and the U.N.-authorized, NATO-commanded, International Security Assistance Force. Canada's Disaster Assistance Response Team has participated in three major relief efforts in the past two years. The 200-member team has been deployed in relief operations after the December 2004 tsunami in South Asia, Hurricane Katrina in September 2005, and the Kashmir earthquake in October 2005. In February 2007, Canada, Italy, Britain, Norway, and Russia announced their funding commitments to launch a $1.5 billion project to help develop vaccines they said could save millions of lives in poor nations, and called on others to join them. In August 2007, Canadian sovereignty in Arctic waters was challenged following a Russian expedition that planted a Russian flag at the seabed at the North Pole. Canada has considered that area to be sovereign territory since 1925. Section 6. Provinces and Territories. Image. A geopolitical map of Canada, exhibiting its ten provinces and three territories. Canada is a federation composed of ten provinces and three territories. In turn, these may be grouped into regions. Western Canada consists of British Columbia and the three prairie provinces, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Central Canada consists of Quebec and Ontario. Atlantic Canada consists of the three maritime provinces, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia, along with Newfoundland and Labrador. Eastern Canada refers to Central Canada and Atlantic Canada together. Three territories, Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut, make up Northern Canada. Provinces have a large degree of autonomy from the federal government, territories somewhat less. Each has its own provincial or territorial symbols. The provinces are responsible for most of Canada's social programs, such as health care, education, and welfare, and together collect more revenue than the federal government, an almost unique structure among federations in the world. Using its spending powers, the federal government can initiate national policies in provincial areas, such as the Canada Health Act. The provinces can opt out of these, but rarely do so in practice. Equalization payments are made by the federal government to ensure that reasonably uniform standards of services and taxation are kept between the richer and poorer provinces. All provinces have unicameral elected legislatures, headed by a premier, selected in the same way as the Prime Minister of Canada. Each province also has a lieutenant governor, representing the Queen, analogous to the Governor General of Canada. The lieutenant governor is appointed on the recommendation of the Prime Minister of Canada, though with increasing levels of consultation with provincial governments in recent years. Section 7. Geography and Climate Image. A satellite composite image of Canada. Boreal forests prevail on the Rocky Canadian Shield. Ice and tundra are prominent in the Arctic. Glaciers are visible in the Canadian Rockies and coast mountains. Flat and fertile prairies facilitate agriculture. The Great Lakes feed the St. Lawrence River in the southeast, where lowlands host much of Canada's population. Canada occupies a major northern portion of North America, sharing land borders with the contiguous United States to the south and with the U.S. state of Alaska to the northwest, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean in the east to the Pacific Ocean in the west. To the north lies the Arctic Ocean. By total area, including its waters, Canada is the second largest country in the world, after Russia 
and largest on the continent. By land area, it ranks fourth, after Russia, China, and the United States. Since 1925, Canada has claimed the portion of the Arctic between 60 degrees west and 141 degrees west longitude, but this claim is not universally recognized. The northernmost settlement in Canada and in the world is Canadian Forces Station Alert on the northern tip of Ellesmere Island, latitude 82.5 degrees north, just 817 kilometers or 450 nautical miles from the North Pole. Canada has the longest coastline in the world, 243,000 kilometers. The population density, 3.5 inhabitants per square kilometer, or 9.1 per square mile, is among the lowest in the world. The most densely populated part of the country is the Quebec City-Windsor Corridor, along the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River in the southeast. To the north of this region is the broad Canadian Shield, an area of rock scoured clean by the last ice age, thinly soiled, rich in minerals, and dotted with lakes and rivers. Canada, by far, has more lakes than any other country, and has a large amount of the world's fresh water. Image. The Horseshoe Falls, in Ontario, is the largest component of Niagara Falls, one of the world's most voluminous waterfalls, a major source of hydroelectric power, and a tourist destination. In eastern Canada, the St. Lawrence River widens into the Gulf of St. Lawrence, the world's largest estuary which contains the island of Newfoundland. South of the Gulf, the Canadian Maritimes protrude eastward along the Appalachian Mountain Range from northern New England and the Gaspé Peninsula of Quebec. New Brunswick and Nova Scotia are divided by the Bay of Fundy, which experiences the world's largest tidal variations. Ontario and Hudson Bay dominate central Canada. West of Ontario, the broad, flat Canadian prairies spread toward the Rocky Mountains, which separate them from British Columbia. In western Canada, the Mackenzie River flows from the Great Slave Lake to the Arctic Ocean. A tributary of a tributary of the Mackenzie is the South Nahanni River, which is home to Virginia Falls, a waterfall about twice as high as Niagara Falls. Northern Canadian vegetation tapers from coniferous forests to tundra, and finally to arctic barrens in the far north. The northern Canadian mainland is ringed with a vast archipelago containing some of the world's largest islands. Average winter and summer high temperatures across Canada vary depending on the location. Winters can be harsh in many regions of the country, particularly in the interior and prairie provinces, which experience a continental climate where daily average temperatures are near minus 15 degrees Celsius, or 5 degrees Fahrenheit, but can drop below minus 40 degrees Celsius, or minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, with severe wind chills. In non-coastal regions, snow can cover the ground almost six months of the year, more in the north. Coastal British Columbia is an exception, and enjoys a temperate climate with a mild and rainy winter. On the east and west coast, average high temperatures are generally in the low 20s Celsius, or 70s Fahrenheit, while between the coasts, the average summer high temperature ranges from 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, or 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, with occasional extreme heat in some interior locations exceeding 40 degrees Celsius, or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. For a more complete description of climate across Canada, see Environment Canada's website. Section 8. Economy. Image. Canadian banknotes depicting, top to bottom, Wilfrid Laurier on the $5 note, John A. Macdonald on the $10 note, Queen Elizabeth II on the $20 note, William Lyon Mackenzie King on the $50 note, and Robert Borden on the $100 note. Canada is one of the world's wealthiest nations with a high per capita income, a member of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD, and Group of Eight, 
or G8. Canada is a free market economy with slightly more government intervention than the United States, but much less than most European nations. Canada has traditionally had a lower per capita gross domestic product, or GDP, than its southern neighbor, whereas wealth has been more equally divided, but higher than the large Western European economies. Since the early 1990s, the Canadian economy has been growing rapidly with low unemployment and large government surpluses on the federal level. Today, Canada closely resembles the U.S. in its market-oriented economic system, pattern of production, and high living standards. As of October 2007, Canada's national unemployment rate of 5.9% is its lowest in 33 years. Provincial unemployment rates vary from a low of 3.6% in Alberta to a high of 14.6% in Newfoundland and Labrador. In the past century, the growth of the manufacturing, mining, and service sectors has transformed the nation from a largely rural economy into one primarily industrial and urban. As with other first world nations, the Canadian economy is dominated by the service industry, which employs about three quarters of Canadians. However, Canada is unusual among developed countries in the importance of the primary sector, with the logging and oil industries being two of Canada's most important. Canada is one of the few developed nations that is a net exporter of energy. Atlantic Canada has vast offshore deposits of natural gas, and large oil and gas resources are centered in Alberta. The vast Athabasca tar sands give Canada the world's second largest reserves of oil, behind Saudi Arabia. In Quebec, British Columbia, Newfoundland and Labrador, Ontario, and Manitoba, hydroelectric power is a cheap and clean source of renewable energy. Canada is one of the world's most important suppliers of agricultural products, with the Canadian prairies one of the most important suppliers of wheat, canola, and other grains. Canada is the world's largest producer of zinc and uranium, and a world leader in many other natural resources, such as gold, nickel, aluminum, and lead. Many, if not most, towns in the northern part of the country, where agriculture is difficult, exist because of a nearby mine or source of timber. Canada also has a sizable manufacturing sector centered in southern Ontario and Quebec, with automobiles and aeronautics representing particularly important industries. Canada is highly dependent on international trade, especially trade with the United States. The 1989 Canada-U.S. Free Trade Agreement and 1994 North American Free Trade Agreement, which included Mexico, touched off a dramatic increase in trade and economic integration with the U.S. Since 2001, Canada has successfully avoided economic recession and has maintained the best overall economic performance in the G8. Since the mid-1990s, Canada's federal government has posted annual budgetary surpluses and has steadily paid down the national debt. Section 9. Demographics. Image. Toronto, Ontario skyline with the CN Tower. Toronto is Canada's most populous metropolitan area with 5,113,149 people. Canada's 2006 census counted a total population of 31,612,897 an increase of 5.4% since 2001. Population growth is from immigration and, to a lesser extent, natural growth. About three quarters of Canada's population lives within 150 kilometers, or 90 miles, of the U.S. border. A similar proportion live in urban areas, concentrated in the Quebec City-Windsor Corridor, notably the Greater Golden Horseshoe, which is the region around Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa, the B.C. Lower Mainland, consisting of the region surrounding Vancouver, and the Calgary-Edmonton Corridor in Alberta. According to the 2001 census, it has 34 ethnic groups with at least 100,000 members each, 
with 83% of the total population claiming they are white. The largest ethnic group is English, 20.2%, followed by French, 15.8%, Scottish, 14.0%, Irish, 12.9%, German, 9.3%, Italian, 4.3%, Chinese, 3.7%, Ukrainian, 3.6%, and First Nations, 3.4%. 40% of respondents identified their ethnicity as Canadian. Canada's Aboriginal population is growing almost twice as fast as the Canadian average. In 2001, 13.4% of the population belonged to non-Aboriginal visible minorities. In 2001, 49% of the Vancouver population and 42.8% of Toronto's population were visible minorities. In March 2005, Statistics Canada projected that people of non-European origins will constitute a majority in both Toronto and Vancouver by 2012. According to Statistics Canada's forecasts, the number of visible minorities in Canada is expected to double by 2017. Roughly one out of every five people in Canada could be a member of a visible minority by 2017. Canada has the highest per capita immigration rate in the world, driven by economic policy and family reunification. Canada also accepts large numbers of refugees. Newcomers settle mostly in the major urban areas of Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal. By the 1990s and 2000s, almost all of Canada's immigrants came from Asia. Support for religious pluralism is an important part of Canada's political culture. According to the 2001 census, 77.1% of Canadians identify as being Christians. Of this, Catholics make up the largest group, 43.6% of Canadians. The largest Protestant denomination is the United Church of Canada. About 16.5% of Canadians declare no religious affiliation and the remaining 6.3% are affiliated with religions other than Christianity, of which the largest is Islam, numbering 1.9%, followed by Judaism at 1.1%. Canadian provinces and territories are responsible for education. Each system is similar while reflecting regional history, culture, and geography. The mandatory school age ranges between 5 to 7 to 16 to 18 years, contributing to an adult literacy rate that is 99%. Post-secondary education is also administered by provincial and territorial governments, who provide most of the funding. The federal government administers additional research grants, student loans, and scholarships. In 2002, 43% of Canadians aged between 25 and 64 had post-secondary education. For those aged 25 to 34, the post-secondary attainment reaches 51 percent. Section 10. Culture. Image. A Kwakwakia Wakwa totem pole and traditional big house in Victoria, B.C. Canadian culture has historically been influenced by British, French, and Aboriginal cultures and traditions. It has also been influenced by American culture because of its proximity and migration between the two countries. American media and entertainment are popular, if not dominant, in Canada. Conversely, many Canadian cultural products and entertainers are successful in the U.S. and worldwide. Many cultural products are marketed toward a unified North American or global market. The creation and preservation of distinctly Canadian culture are supported by federal government programs, laws, and institutions, such as the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, or CBC, the National Film Board of Canada, or NFB, and the Canadian Radio Television and Telecommunications Commission, or CRTC. Canada 
is a geographically vast and ethnically diverse country. There are cultural variations and distinctions from province to province and region to region. Canadian culture has also been greatly influenced by immigration from all over the world. Many Canadians value multiculturalism and see Canadian culture as being inherently multicultural. Multicultural heritage is enshrined in Section 27 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Image The Royal Canadian Mounted Police, seen here at Expo 67, are the Federal and National Police Force of Canada and an international icon. National symbols are influenced by natural, historical, and First Nation sources. Particularly, the use of the maple leaf as a Canadian symbol dates back to the early 18th century and is depicted on its current and previous flags, the penny, and on the coat of arms. Other prominent symbols include the beaver, Canada goose, common loon, the crown, and the RCMP. Canada's official national sports are ice hockey in winter and lacrosse in summer. Hockey is a national pastime and the most popular spectator sport in the country. It is the most popular sport Canadians play, with 1.65 million active participants in 2004. Canada's six largest metropolitan areas, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Ottawa, Calgary, and Edmonton, have franchises in the National Hockey League, and there are more Canadian players in the league than from all other countries combined. After hockey, other popular spectator sports include curling and football. The latter is played professionally in the Canadian Football League. Golf, baseball, skiing, soccer, volleyball, and basketball are widely played at youth and amateur levels, but professional leagues and franchises are not as widespread. Canada has hosted several high-profile international sporting events, including the 1976 Summer Olympics, the 1988 Winter Olympics, and the 2007 FIFA U-20 World Cup. Canada will be the host country for the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver and Whistler, British Columbia. Section 11. Language. Image. The population of Montreal, Quebec, is mainly francophone, with a significant anglophone community. Canada's two official languages are English and French. Official bilingualism in Canada is law, defined in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the Official Languages Act, and Official Language Regulations. It is applied by the Commissioner of Official Languages. English and French have equal status in federal courts, parliament, and in all federal institutions. The public has the right, where there is sufficient demand, to receive federal government services in either English or French, and official language minorities are guaranteed their own schools in all provinces and territories. English and French are the mother tongues of 59.7% and 23.2% of the population respectively, and the languages most spoken at home by 68.3% and 22.3% of the population respectively. 98.5% of Canadians speak English or French, 67.5% speak English only, 13.3% speak French only, and 17.7% speak both. English and French official language communities, defined by first official language spoken, constitute 73.0% and 23.6% of the population respectively. Although 85% of French-speaking Canadians live in Quebec, there are substantial Francophone populations in Ontario, Alberta, and southern Manitoba, with an Acadian population in the northern and southeastern parts of New Brunswick, constituting 35% of that province's population, as well as concentrations in southwestern Nova Scotia and on Cape Breton Island. Ontario has the largest French-speaking population outside Quebec. The Charter of the French Language in Quebec makes French the official language in Quebec, and New Brunswick is the only province to have a statement of official bilingualism in the Constitution.
Other provinces have no official languages as such, but French is used as a language of instruction, in courts, and for other government services in addition to English. Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec allow for both English and French to be spoken in the provincial legislatures, and laws are enacted in both languages. In Ontario, French has some legal status, but is not fully co-official. Several Aboriginal languages have official status in Northwest Territories. Inuktitut is the majority language in Nunavut, and one of three official languages in the territory. Non-official languages are important in Canada, with 5,202,245 people listing one as a first language. Some significant non-official first languages include Chinese, with 853,745 first language speakers, Italian, with 469,485, German, with 438,080, and Punjabi, with 271,220. Section 12. International Rankings. The United Nations Development Program ranks Canada fourth out of 177 in its Human Development Index. A.T. Kearney and Foreign Policy Magazine rank Canada sixth out of 111 in their Globalization Index 2006. IMD International ranks Canada tenth out of 60 in its World Competitiveness Yearbook 2007. The Economist ranks Canada 14th out of 111 in its Worldwide Quality of Life Index, 2005. Yale University and Columbia University rank Canada 6th out of 146 in their Environmental Sustainability Index, 2005. Reporters Without Borders Worldwide ranks Canada 16th out of 168 in its Press Freedom Index, 2006. Transparency International ranks Canada 14th out of 159 in its Corruption Perceptions Index, 2005. The Heritage Foundation and the Wall Street Journal rank Canada 10th out of 161 in their Index of Economic Freedom, 2007. The Economist ranks Canada 8th out of 121 in its Global Peace Index. The Fund for Peace and ForeignPolicy.com rank Canada 168 out of 177 in their Failed States Index, 2007. Section 13. See also. Please refer to the original article for links to over 70 Wikipedia articles about specific topics related to Canada. These include articles on time periods in Canadian history and general Canadian history, articles on Canadian law and politics, articles on Canadian geographical features and on individual geographical regions in Canada, articles on aspects of the Canadian economy, articles and lists giving Canadian demographic data, and articles on Canadian culture and symbols. Section 14. Notes. Please refer to the original article for the footnotes. Section 15. References. Please refer to the original article for the references section, which cites the approximately 40 books used as sources for this article. Section 16. External links. Please refer to the original article for external links related to Canada. This concludes the Wikipedia article on Canada. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, which is available at http colon slash slash gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html.